Lone win this year for UMass came against UConn back on October 9th at home, 27-13 final score. They have FCS losses this year to Rhode Island and Maine. Meanwhile, for the Aggies, their lone win was an FCS win against South Carolina State, and it was all the way back in game number four. Aggies have dropped seven straight. UMass has lost five in a row. UMass won the toss. They choose to defer to half two, so CJ Kologi will kick off to the Aggies, and we are underway here in the season finale. And the Aggies will have it at the 25-yard line on the touchback. And we'll see if this Aggie offense, Danny, can get back on track. It's been a struggle recently. Now, two SEC opponents back-to-back -back weeks will not help, but the Aggies are looking for their first offensive touchdown in three games. They have not had a touchdown pass in four games since the game at Hawaii back on October 23rd. Yeah, you know, Jonas had a rough go these last two games here, and so a lot of pressures, a lot of stats saying he's one of the most pressured guys in football, college football. But we know one thing for certain, when he gets protection, he'll find the guys. And we have a couple, two or three good receivers out there that if he connects with them and we get that running game going, it should be a good one. Jonah Johnson making his eighth consecutive start. No touchdown passes in the previous three. He has eight touchdown passes, eight interceptions during his first season with the Aggies, his junior year. Johnson back to throw, now he's going to run. A flag is down, he will slide up near the 30. They'll mark him down at the 29-yard line. Penalties were an issue for the Aggies the last two weeks. Yeah, this is not quite the way you want to start it. Yeah. Not the way you wanted to start it, but the one thing we did see here is you spread the field out. Jonas sees the opportunity because no one's on the quarterback. He steps up into the pocket. Great big opening in there, and he just takes the ball in there. That's our right tackle, Stefan Townsend, a former JUCO teammate of Jonah Johnson at Fresno City College. Also in his first year with the Aggies, Juwan Price had success against Kentucky, and he rumbles up past the 30, up to the 31. A gain of 16 for Price, who ran for 51 last week in Lexington. Yeah, you know, one of the, one of the nice things about this this year is watching Juwan Price begin the season and now and he has just got so confident there you saw the patience you saw him jump to the outside and then get upfield as fast as he can he has really turned it on from the beginning of our first game till now and he's really done great things injured player right now for umass minutemen defensively allowing 43 points per game this season Back with you here in the regular season finale. The player that was injured for UMass was defensive tackle Hugo Cloggies, a freshman from Spain. He is one of 62 freshmen for the Minutemen, Danny, and here we get a replay of what happened to Cloggies during the injury. Well, it looks like his own player kind of went, smashed up into him, a little collateral damage there. Got the Spain tr player coming in, have a have some uh, folks that live out that way and kind of yeah. funneled him back to UMass and coaches saw him in some uh, different places and decided, yeah, this is the guy for us and he's done quite well for him. One of 62 freshmen for UMass. The Aggies after the 16 yard run for Price will run it with him again. He's tripped up by Cody Jones, the freshman safety. A lot of freshmen, Danny, you don't usually see 60 plus on one FBS roster. Yeah, that is, this is a young team for sure. And it makes it, um, it's baptism by fire when you have so many freshmen coming in and playing and it's tough. And Juwan Price right there almost broke that. He gets his hand down and turns a corner. There's no one left between him and the goal line. Aggies will swing it out a low pass. It is caught by P.J. Johnson, the freshman, and he gets the first down and then some. The Aggies have been 12 for 46 on third down in the previous three. Johnson really coming on late during his freshman year. He picks up 10. Yeah, Johnson to Johnson. You know, you, you, you provide enough time for Jonah. Jonah will find someone. In this case, it's P.J. Johnson out there in the flats, and he just turned that up. Knew where the first down marker is. Good presence on the field to know where he needs to get to. Five catches in the previous two games against Alabama and Kentucky for the freshman from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Taking full advantage of more playing time. Rolling left and airing and out downfield. Jonah Johnson, he has Garcia Castaneda, and he hauls it in inside the red zone. 
Great pass, nice catch there. Isaiah certainly has the speed. Looks like he's getting up a little slow there. Oh, but he busted through a crossing route across the middle there. Looks like they had two posts coming in there. So you see him coming from, uh, from the uh, bottom of your left screen to the right. You see the cross right there. And as soon as they did, he broke free. Jonah saw him. He planted his feet. Nice presence to turn Jonah, get his feet set, and get the ball out to, to uh, Isaiah. 40-yard connection down to the 12-yard line. Juwan Price, the running back, four out wide on first and 10. The Aggies will give it to Juwan Price. Pretty good carry down to the six-yard line. He gets six yards on the first down run. It's going to be second down and four. Price has run for 536 for the year, six rushing touchdowns, a long run of 56 during his redshirt freshman year. And they will mark it at the five yard line. So second down and three for the Aggie offense. Looking for their first offensive touchdown in three games. High snap, the give is to Price again and he darts in the end zone. Jawan Price, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season and the Aggie offense is back in the end zone. You know, Juwan Price, from the beginning of the year to now, he's, he has a little patience on that, so he let the blocking get out in front of him. The offensive line, those big hosses up front, they really did a great job. So look at the line, look at the line up there and execute their blocks. They push everyone to the right, push everyone to the left, create the seam, and he just lets that open and then just walks that in. Nicely done by that O-line, and Juwan Price taking it in for the score. The Aggie offense had gone 11 quarters without an offensive touchdown. The point after from Ethan Albertson is good. The most recent offensive touchdown was the Juwan Price rushing touchdown, Danny, in the first quarter against Utah State three games ago. And now the Aggies score first for the fourth straight week. That's pretty impressive. Been a pretty good year for Juwan Price. Seven rushing touchdowns. He is approaching 600 rushing yards for the season. And he's almost averaging five yards per carry. It's been a solid freshman year for him, Danny. Yeah, he has proved that he's really uh, capable, you know, especially going into Alabama and Kentucky. And he had some rough game. I mean, some rough games. It was tough, but he was out there competing and he was actually doing quite well. He did, you know, he ran for 51 yards uh, caught the ball four times at Kentucky. So I, I like that. I like seeing players step up and saying, you know what, I can perform at this level. Even though they're good talent, I'm going to compete. And he did. Only six plays, 75 yards. The five-yard touchdown run for Price. And now Ethan Albertson will kick off to Eric Hollins. And it's a line drive kick that sails into the end zone. Defensively for the Yagis, Danny, they forced four turnovers a week ago in Lexington, but they still allowed way too many explosion plays. They're forcing turnovers. Yeah. The explosion plays have been the issue. The explosion plays have gotten them all year long, but certainly turn, you know, forcing the turnovers, get a scoop and score by Trevor. They've done quite well there. Um, defensively from the corner position, I was really impressed with both corners, both Cyrus and DJ played a super game, I think, at Kentucky because they closed fast, they had good coverage. Let's see if they can hold on to that again. New question mark today for UMass. Who would start at quarterback? It's the redshirt freshman Garrett Zero for the second straight week. And they give it to Ellis Merriweather, and he is stuffed immediately. That is Eric Marsh, who came up from his linebacker position for the tackle for loss. Oh, Eric Marsh coming off the edge. He was just, I think he came in unabated and just crushed. He was right there, nothing doing. So as soon as he got the handoff, not one more yard. Five-yard loss on the run for Merriweather, who's having a great year. Merriweather, a redshirt junior from Alpharetta, Georgia, transfer from Garden City Community College. Entered the day 30 yards away, rushing from the 1,000-yard plateau. He's the pistol back here, right back to Merriweather, trying to bounce it to the outside, can't do so. The Aggies able to stop the run early. That is Blowers on the tackle, the seldom used. Junior from Las Cruces, James Blowers with the tackle there in Merriweather. 
Nice coming in for support there. Lots of Aggies to the ball, so a lot of aggression up there in terms of getting to the ball, and that's what I like to see from a defense. We want to see hats to the ball. We want to see people play up to the whistle and get to the ball. So look at how many people are going to be there. Get the initial hit, but look at all the Aggies standing around there flying to the ball. That's what makes a great defense right there. Third down, 14 yards to go for UMass offensively. Heavy pressure, and it's a sack for Trevor Brohar. What a couple of man. weeks he has had, his oh. second sack of the season. Oh, he, against Kentucky, he was flying everywhere there. And so, Adam, I know we were both standing up here looking at him. He was just gearing up. If you could just see him gearing up, gearing up, and he timed it perfectly as soon as they snapped the ball, he blew by everyone. He's fast, and he hits hard. Trevor, that's a great job right there. And will force UMass to punt. A good opening drive defensively for the Aggie defense. Already ahead, 7-0. Dixon back to return. George Georgiopoulos, junior from Greenville, South Carolina, will kick out of his own end zone. This could be dangerous here for UMass. He gets it away. A low line drive kick near the 50. Dixon has it returnable. And Dixon is into UMass territory, so great field position for the Aggie offense coming off a great drive. Punt of 42, return of seven for Dixon. The Aggies will try to extend their 7-0 lead when you come back. UMass had a coaching change earlier this month. Alex Miller, their offensive line coach and run game coordinator, took over for Walt Bell on November 7th. Bell was relieved of his duties after going 2-23 and in two-plus years. So Miller, who's a former UMass offensive lineman, 07 UMass grad, was part of some really, really good teams back then. He is the interim head coach right now for the Minutemen. Good start for the Aggies, a good offensive drive and also a good defensive drive as well. Johnson will fake the handoff. Now he's going to run, trying to get away from a UMass defensive lineman, and that is Uchenna Ezeweke, the redshirt sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, with his first sack of the season. It's a loss of one for Jonah Johnson. Yeah, you hit five guys in the pattern, so we've covered everything. We spread everyone out. You have three guys deep. You have two people in the flats area, and there was no one open. There was just good coverage right there. Jonah had to scramble a bit, take care of the football, which he's gotten better at. So that was just great coverage right there by UMass. Juwan Price, the running back alongside Jonah Johnson. Run pass option once again. Johnson looking for a receiver. A helmet flies off of a minute, man. And then Johnson will sidestep out of bounds. That is defensive lineman Avian Pia, who had his helmet fly off after the rush of four for Johnson. So Pia will have to come off for a play. You know, they went back to look at the same similar pattern that they had that deep ball on before where he had a crossing route there. But this time, I think UMass is sitting back there and wasn't going to be fooled by this crossing deep pattern. And they stayed deep in coverage and didn't allow him to clear and get free. Aggies have struggled on third down this year, only converting 37% of the time. They're one for one today. This is third and seven. Four out wide, two receivers top side, two receivers bottom side of your screen. And that's going to be a delay of game. Yeah. Delay of game, number 10, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Not sure what Jonah was waiting for there, Danny. Our referee today is Derek Anderson. Yeah, uh, he, he checked the sidelines, and everyone looked that way. It looks like they had the play called in, but for some reason, he just didn't get into the cadence and didn't get it going and ended up with a delay there. Changes out, though. We got a tight end that came in the game. We got to keep our eye on, um, on Tom Hudson, who's uh, done some great things at that tight end position. Let's see what he can dial up this time. Third and 12 from the... 49 after the delay of game. Heavy pressure from UMass, and Johnson is dropped again. Second sack in a row for Uchenna Ezeweke, the redshirt sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Loss of nine. You know, we talked about Jonah being pressured and all the pressures that are there, and this is one of them right there. We outnumber them on the offensive line, and still they have four down linemen, and we have five and a, uh, a back in there as well, and still able to put pressure on Jonah, and there's just nothing he could do with the ball. 
That's a tough blocking assignment there for the running back, Price, who just could not block as a weak game. Josh Carlson gets the punt away. Eric Collins is back deep, calling for a fair catch. And he will handle just inside the 25-yard line. They will mark it at the 24. UMass offense will take over. 7-0 Aggies. 34-yard punts for Carlson. Senior day here at Aggie Memorial. One of those seniors is Jared Wyatt. And for more on his story, we send it down to the field to Tatiana Favela. Hey guys. Hey guys, well, star wide receiver Jared Wyatt says that he's put in a ton of work in his offseason and pays his success to football because of that. Now, earlier in the season, head coach Doug Martin did say that he's been playing the best football in his career. But Wyatt responded to that, saying that, of course, he could do so much better and get on that next level. Now, Wyatt, ha Wyatt has been traveled throughout his well traveled throughout his career. This is the third college that he's played for, and today does mark his final. Uh, football college game, so he did share that his focus to finish this season was to finish strong and on the right foot. Adam, Danny. Thank you, Tatiana. He is certainly saving his best for last. Third school after starting his college career at Bowling Green, then Navarro College, and now he's having a breakout season. Leads the Aggies and catches this year. The run goes for only one for Ellis Merriweather. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center, the official health care partner of Aggie Athletics. So far, so good. Stoppy Merriweather, who is a load in the backfield, Danny. Yeah, you know, I talked to Coach Mumford, who's our defensive line coach, and he talked about Merriweather and what a great running back he is, and they're going to have their hands full trying to keep him jarred up. But clearly on that play, they were all over that. Empty backfield for starting quarterback Garrett Zuro, who's making his second straight start. Struggled last week against Army. Here's Merriweather on the catch. He is belted immediately by cornerback Cyrus Dumas. Merriweather also good in the passing game. That's his 19th reception of the season. Second best for UMass. So the Ags dial up a, a blitz. So you see the blitz coming on the right side of your screen coming through there. And when that happens, Cyrus has to come up and play some defense. So he was playing deeper. He was about 8 to 10 back and he came screaming up. I just think our cornerbacks have played so well, and they close, their closing speed on plays is fantastic. UMass, 34% this year on a third down. They need the 35-yard line. They're gonna give it to Merriweather, and he will be a yard shy of the yardage needed. So he gets four, he needed five yards, and. Another good defensive stand for the Aggies. No sign of the special teams unit yet for UMass. Both programs one in 10, Danny. Why not go for it, right? Yeah, I was thinking this gamble. It's, it's like, let's put it all on the line. There's no use in playing it safe. This is like last game of the year. Let's go, man. Pin your ears back. Let's get after it. And that's what they're doing. So let's see if the Aggies can dig their heels in. UMass eight for 21 this year on fourth down. They only need one yard here. Zero the quarterback. He gives it to Merriweather, and he gets the first down. Forward progress up to the 37 for the 225-pound big running back from Alpharetta, Georgia. Hey, who says not, uh, last games aren't important here? So here he is pointed into the line. Gets a little gap in there. Merriweather's a good running back. You know, Coach Mumford's right. Getting a little chippy down there because certainly they both want to win this game. So, you know, last game of the year, records, forget the records. You want to go out with a win and do whatever it takes. The interim head coach for UMass, Alex Miller, is also their run game coordinator and their own line coach. So he's heavily responsible for that good year for Merriweather, who catches out of the backfield, spins off the tackle of DJ McCullough. And he's finally speared out of bounds by Nick Chocolone. So it's a heavy dose of Merriweather in the running game and in the passing game. You know, you get to you get to the point where the coaches dial up a defense and you get to the right spot. That's their job. Your job is to make a play. We had players in the right spot. We just couldn't make the tackles. And these are the tough ones there. So he comes off a block. He screams up there. We already talked about how quick our corners are at, at coverage and getting closing there. But you have to make the tackle or at least hold on till help comes. 
UMass up to the 42, a catch and run of five yards for Merriweather, his second catch so far today. And here's Merriweather on the ground, and he is dragged down immediately by Trevor Brohar. What a good week he had, Danny and Lexington. You know, Trevor was just from sideline to sidelines, and some of the hits that he put on people in, uh, in Kentucky was astonishing. And so, like I was talking about in the open, where, you know, everyone always wants to play in the big games, but when you're there, you have to make the most of it, and he did. He, he really rose to the occasion, and he played a fantastic game, showed no fear, scoop and score, of course, we yeah. talked about it, and just some great tackling and great hitting. Also had one and a half tackles for loss, had seven tackles last week for the second straight week against the SEC. UMass needs the 47, the pass is bobbled and it's incomplete. And that was in the hands of Rico Arnold, the top target this year for all the UMass quarterbacks. The transfer from Charlotte almost had it in his bread basket. Oh, it hit him, man. It, it maybe he threw a little hot there, but coming across the middle there, I think that's a ball that maybe should have been caught. When the ball pops up, that should be a pick for any safety back there for the Aggies as well. That's the tip drill that they go through every day. You got to pull that down for your receiver. If it pops up, if you're a defender, Aggies, go get that thing. So we'll see George Georgiopoulos for the second time today punting the football for UMass. Lawrence Dixon is back deep. The kick is away near the 10-yard line. This is a tough return for Dixon. A very good punt for Georgiopoulos, and the Aggies will start inside the 10-yard line. And that is flipping field position for sure. Outstanding work by Georgiopoulos, a punt of 49 yards. He's averaging 44 per punt this year. They've been able to get off to pretty good starts in the first two quarters, including last week at Kentucky. They were in that football game in quarter two. Johnson will swing it out, a high pass. It is caught by P.J. Johnson, who gets away from the initial defender. He was on the back of Teray Powell, the nickelback initially, and then squirted away before being tackled for a loss of three. I, well, I certainly think both both teams know the, the key plays that the, each team likes to, to play or throw. In this case, we like our quick screens, but part of the quick screens is you have to have 11 right there in front of the, uh, the block there. Andre Bodison has to get that block, otherwise you get zero yards like this right here. And let me tell you, it's looking kind of chippy down there. Not a whole lot of breathing room. Johnson's in his own end zone. The Aggies will throw on second down. Receiver open. It's caught by Bodison on senior day. Trying to cut it to the outside. He's in a UMass territory. Big reception for the senior out of Palm Coast, Florida. Andre Bodison picks up 47. Well, a couple things, Adam. One is you have to have, Jonah has to have time. We've already said if you get time, he'll find the guys. The second is Andre Bodison. He finds him in cover two, so they got two safeties deep. He splits it straight up the middle there, and there's no one there. It's just an easy toss, easy catch, big yards. Johnson will hand it off to Jawan Price. A good start for him. He zooms down the near sideline. And Jawan is inside the 40. They're going to mark him all the way down, it looks like, to the 35-yard line. He gets 13. Yeah, I'm just so impressed with Jawan Price and how he's really grown as a running back. And the more that we see him running, the more touches he gets, he gets more confident. He was really patient until he got the corner. Once he got the corner, he planted that foot and went upfield for positive yards. Bodison in motion. Johnson will hand it off to Price. Stays patient here, trying to find a hole and sneaks ahead inside the 35 down to the 34. He only picks up one. And he's been pretty much the exclusive back the last handful of weeks. Alex Escobar has been used a little bit. But Omari Samuels, who was used a lot the first five weeks or so of the season, he only has two carries in the previous three games. Yeah, you see, um, you see Juwan Price right here. There's a small hole. Maybe he should have planted and went up field there. But um, here we are back here. Get Alex back in there for extra protection on Jonah. Escobar's in it, running back. He was great against Kentucky last week. The pass is underneath. It's a one-handed snag by Terrell Warner. What a catch by the Dodge City Community College transfer. He gets two yards on a one-handed snare. Yeah, I'm not sure how he held on to that thing. 
put the ball up there behind him and high. That's perfect for safety cornerback to come in there and give you a good pop. And that's exactly what he took. And he still hold, held on to the ball. Third and seven now. We'll see if the Aggies snap the football before the end of the first quarter. Doesn't look like it. And that'll be the end of one quarter. Five-yard touchdown run for Juwan Price. Early, the, the Aggie of the offense is driving. It is third and seven, though, here in the season finale. The Aggies and the Minutemen both looking for their second win of 2021. Wyatt, Downs, Bodison, Mills, Reeves, Eli Johnson, O'Mary, Ash, and Dockstatter. It's good to see those smiles down there in the field, Danny. Yeah, you know, at the, at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that happen on the field in terms of records, but the people that you sweat with day in and day out, you'll never, ever forget them. Sage came here, he wasn't even 17. He just turned yeah. 17 and now he's 23. He's been here in almost a lifetime. Big third and seven here for the Aggie offense. Pistol back Escobar and a flag comes in pre-snap. False start, number 61, offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's on one of those seniors, Eli Johnson, who has been such a big addition for the Aggie offensive line, transferring in from Ole Miss. From Taylor, Mississippi. And that'll make it third and 12. It also may have pushed the Aggies out of field goal range here for Ethan Albertson. We'll see if they can't convert. The catch is made by Bodison and Andre Bodison, another big yardage play. Yards after the catch, good enough for the first down. He gets 20. Yeah, Andre, who's a big guy, he's 6'5", right? But he comes in, they're playing a zone back there, so everyone's got a zone. So you see him sitting back in their places, and Andre just finds that one seam that they just can't get to and just sits there and turns around. Jonah hits him right away. Good start for Jonah Johnson as well. Boat is soon in motion. The Aggies will give it to Escobar. Running left, lowers his shoulders, and he cruises up to the 12-yard line. He gets five yards. Last week in Lexington, Escobar had four carries, also three catches. He has six carries, five catches in the previous two games. He's just a hardworking guy, and that's I think that's why they put him in there for a captain as well. But it's nice to have him get the ball, and he'll just get some hard pounding running yards right there. Second down from the 12-yard line. Running back is Price. Right back to Jawan Price inside the 10, down to the nine and a half yard line. And it'll be third down and short after a pickup of three. This is where the Aggies had some opportunities in Kentucky last week and could not capitalize with touchdowns. Had to settle for three field goals in situations like this. Third and two, and Jonah Johnson cannot go anywhere. No gain on the play. Forward progress will keep him just inside the 10. You have to go for it here, right, Danny? Yeah, it's a tough one. Here's the quarterback sneak. So uh, if you're going to do a quarterback sneak, I like quarterbacks being up on the line of scrimmage so you can see where the pressure is coming from. In a shotgun situation, if you get lots of penetration, there's nowhere for the quarterback to go. Aggies need two yards. Seven for 18 this year on fourth down. And off to Price, near the edge. Price inside the five yard line. He zooms in the end zone. Touchdown, Jawan Price. His second this afternoon, number eight during his freshman year. Yeah, that's a great job right there. So when in doubt, give it to Price. Ball everyone up in the middle, push him down in the middle, give him the edge to do whatever he needs to because he has the wheels to either take it all the way to the corner or plant his foot and take it up, and that's what they did. Great job right there. Long drive of 10 plays, 92 yards, covering just over five minutes. Point after from Albertson, and the Aggies lead by two scores, 14-0. And it's been a really good mix, Danny, of run and pass today. I was just thinking the same thing. So you think back on those, this, that last series, 
It was the two big passes to Andre Bodison that really broke those. One was a long third down where he's able to, to break it, and the other one, he just kind of finds the seam in there. And then you finish it out at the very end here. It's like ball everyone up around the inside, and draw Pice, take it around the corner, and push it in. Doug Martin's offense humming early on here in quarter two, 14-0. The defense also playing well. Jonah Johnson now six for six for 122. Eight carries, 55 yards, two touchdowns, almost seven yards a carry for Price so far. You know, Adam, when you get the run going, and that's why I like the part of the keys, is that when you establish the run, then you have to respect that as a defense. And then when you do, you say you got to come up and stop the run, and that's when coach dumps those ones over the middle. So you have to pick your poison when you're on the defense, right? It's like I'm going to stop the run or I'm going to play pass or I'm going to stay balanced, and then it just allows them just to push the ball down the field. That was a great series of nice calls by Doug Martin. Ethan Albertson will kick off to Eric Hollins, the transfer from NC State, and it sails over his head. Price looks fresh. We saw that four games ago at Hawaii where he was running all over the place, Danny. He has that ability. Struggled against Alabama two weeks ago, got back on track at Kentucky, and yep. he's really carried that over into today. Well, you know, there's a lot of people that, that have a stumble or have a hard time running the ball against Alabama, right? It's just not New Mexico State. Right. And the important thing is that you get there and you don't get beat up too, too bad because those are some big teams. Uh, but, yeah, he was last week at Kentucky. He ran the ball very well. Here at zero, still in at quarterback, a mobile QB, third-year freshman from Lakewood, Ohio, making his second straight start. Only threw for 78 yards last week in a loss at Army. Merriweather pinballing off defenders. That is carry number seven for him today. He had only run it for six yards before that rush. Eight yards on the carry for Ellis Merriweather, who's approaching the 1,000-yard plateau for his junior season. Uh, maybe we would see Brady Olsen today. Olsen did not start last week, came in in a reserve role, did not attempt to pass, though. Merriweather stays patient. He has the first down, and he's up near the 40. Physical run for a physical running back. He gets six yards for the first down run. Yeah, and it's great blocking up front there. So they, they got the blocking the initial guys up front to the first level. The second level, it, grabbed, it got Trevor. It got a block on Trevor. Trevor wasn't able to get away from the block. You know, from a linebacker position, you want to keep the blocker away from you. You need him at arm's length or he'd be able to push off. Because if you don't, then you can't get off the block fast enough to make a tackle. And that's exactly what happened on that last play. Zero, the quarterback, only completing 46% of his passes this year. Quarterback's been an issue for UMass. Quarterback draw, nearly tripped up, down the near sideline. Zero still on his feet, and he's pushed out of bounds by senior Kayla Mills. I'm not sure how he stayed on his feet initially near midfield. Yeah, there, it's a couple things where we had a blitz coming in from the top of the screen. So you can see a, a blitz that's coming in and we just missed him, right? So we had to put the brakes on, couldn't get there. We missed a tackle right there. He's able to bounce out of that. And then Caleb's job as a safety is just get him out of bounds any way possible. That's just great presence of knowing what to do with the ball. No one was on him and he took the ball and got maximum yards from it. Zero is known as a mobile QB, 5'11", 200 pounds. He runs for 33 on that scamper. Best offensive series so far today for UMass, looking for their first points of the day here on the road. Zero will swing it out. The pass is caught by his running back, Carter Scudo, the freshman from Milford, Massachusetts. And he is tackled immediately by Chris Ojo. Loss of three. Yeah, Chris Ojo is one that we've talked about all year long that has just been a, a great addition from uh, the transfer in from uh, Eastern Washington. And in this case, you can see his athletic ability where he sees what's happening. He bounces off a block, and he just comes screaming in there. And it was just great tackle. Danny, that is 15 tackles for loss now this year for Chris Ojo, which by far leads the Aggies defensively. Scudo, the running back, alongside the quarterback, Zuro. Oh. 
checked out. This is Jared Chisari. Chisari able to angle inside the pylon. Touchdown UMass. Jared Chisari, his second rushing touchdown of the season. I know the Ags were trying to pitch for a, 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 a blank out, not being able to let him score, but in this case, he breaks there and was able to get into the end zone. It looks like we're there. We just couldn't get our arms around him to make the tackle, and he just busted through to the second and third level. No one left to tackle him, and he just walks that one right on in. Point after from Cameron Carson, so, and it's no good. He yanked it. Point after is no good for UMass. And the Minutemen using a couple of different running backs thrown at the Yankees. We've seen Merriweather, Scudo, and Chisari. And it's Chisari who runs it in for UMass. 14 to 6 Aggies early on in quarter two. UMass did win the opening toss today, but chose to defer to half number two. And here's a return for Jawan Price, and he is brought down immediately. A special team stop for Tere Powell, the freshman from Montvale, New Jersey. There is a flag down on the play on special teams. Offside, number 21, kicking team. Mm -hmm. It's a five-yard penalty, re-kick. That's Arn Powell who made the tackle, so he got a little bit of a head start there, Danny. Yeah, it kind of looked like it. Kind of got a jump to it, and he was there in a hurry. I know that Juwan can run those back. We've seen him take those to the house from there, and he just couldn't get past that first level. But once he breaks those one or two tackles near him, he can be off to the races in a hurry. It'll be interesting to see if they do kick to him here. Price did have a kick return touchdown in the first spring game. Remember, the Aggies played a pair of spring games. UMass, also independent, they chose to play in the fall. And they were able to get in a four-game season with zero wins. So UMass, they were in a very similar situation to the Aggies where their fall schedule was pretty much wiped out. They were able to piece together four games, did not play in the spring because of that. And here's the kickoff. They will go away from Juwan Price. Terrell Warner has to scoop it up. He does so late, and this actually turns out to be good for UMass. Driven back as Warner as his helmet pops off near the 15-yard line. Big hit for UMass. Well, they did the, the thing that I was thinking about from the beginning. It's like, well, don't kick it to Juwan because he has been really good at running the ball. So they didn't. They kept it towards Durrell. I mean, towards Terrell. And look at the hit there. And don't tell me that this last game doesn't mean something to these players because it does. And that was bringing the leather. Terrell did a good job of getting that ball and holding on to it, though. The Aggies have been using Isaiah Garcia Castaneda in the return game, but... He's been dealing with that hamstring injury, so only used it wide receiver the last couple of weeks. Game, game clock operator, please stop the clock. And reset it to 9.36. So that clock, Danny, was about a minute off. Just never stopped. Thank you. Derek Anderson, who's been here many times before, is our referee today. Jonah Johnson, the quarterback, good start for him. A couple of rushing touchdowns for Price. Home run ball downfield. He has just his powers, and the flag comes in. That'll be pass interference on sophomore Josh Wallace. Powers, a tall wide receiver who probably has pass not been used enough this year. Number 12, shoot. defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, at 6-4, a 50-50 ball gives him a good chance at that. Now, he went back and made a play for the ball. And if you look at the defense, you can kind of see that the, the cornerback 
the guy covering didn't really turn around and play the ball. That's what they want to see. It's like, well, you have as much right to the ball as the receiver, but if you don't make a play for it, then that is a penalty, and that's what that's what they threw the flag on. Powers had a 41-yard reception at Kentucky last week. Run pass option again. Passes whistle near side and caught by Terrell Warner. And Warner has the first down and then a couple more. Pickup of 11 for Warner. Yeah, Jonah Johnson showing us his arm. Now, we've seen his arm all year long, and we know that he can get the ball out there. He's on one side of the uh, of the sideline and throws it almost to the other to Terrell. That's a long throw, and he makes a great throw and a great catch. Catch number 32 this year for Terrell Warner. Redshirt junior from Louisiana. Some big plays in the passing game today for Andre Bodison. Here's a good first down run for Alex Escobar, who runs hard up near midfield. They'll mark him down at the 49. He gets six. You know, at Alex, Alex Escobar, 5'9", the thing about a small stature running back is they can get out around the end, and sometimes you don't even hardly see them if you get in there with those big, huge guys. And once he's there, they have a low center of gravity. It's very hard to bring him down. Johnson will swing it out. Ooh. Luckily, that was a forward pass. Play was blown up from the start. He was looking for P.J. Johnson, and that could have been really dangerous if it was a backward pass. I think they're looking at that screen. They're watching the screen. We like the screens because we can get the ball out there quick, and you get a receiver in open, open territory and allow them to go get as many yards after catch that they can. We have some very fast receivers. In this case, I think they're waiting on it, and when they see that, Develop, they come flying up. Third and four from just outside midfield. The Aggies need the 47 of UMass. Johnson looks left, he throws left, he hooks up with Warner. And Warner has his second first down catch during this drive here. About midway through quarter two, he picks up nine yards. You put Jonah back there, you give him time. We've said this time and time again, right? As long as he has time, his Arm, he's gotten better through the year as well. Lots of time there to throw the ball. Terrell breaks free on that out, and it's an easy pass for Jonah. The Aggies back into Minutemen territory, looking to extend their 14-6 advantage. Johnson looking to air it out again. He has powers, and he overthrew it. And if you think if he'd have thrown that ball a little more to the to the corner there, do you think Powers could have got to Possibly, it? That would have been close, yeah. but he was pretty even with his with the defender right there, and I think Jonah just put that ball up so he could make a play on it. But it almost felt like if it was just a little farther, he could have got out underneath it. Now, easier to say for me from up here, but uh, Powers is back there. He's doing quite well. You know, matchup, great. They like to see it, and they find something there. They may just go back to it. That was Dante Lindsay, the free safety and coverage. Johnson, eight for 11 so far for 142. Has to scramble here, plants his feet, throws it across his body looking for Juwan Price. A dangerous pass in the middle of the field. It was almost picked off by Josh Wallace. I think the, the rule is don't throw it back to the middle of the field. There's too much going on. Jonah, I think, was coaching him up saying, here's what I was thinking you were gonna do, but that almost turned into disaster. You're right. Aggie's pretty successful today on third down. Three for five. UMass 0 for three. Not in field goal range here. And the Aggies will run it. Juwan Price is tripped up. The ball squirts loose, but he was down first, and he was down at the 36. So now you might be in field goal range. You get six. It's going to be fourth and four. Do you go for it here? Well, I, I think you should think about going for it for sure, and I think his own player tripped him up. They were trying to bring pressure to Jonah, so they're not going to let Jonah sit back there anymore. I wouldn't either. In this case, they brought the pressure, but Price was able to sneak past the defenders beforehand, and here they are going to go for it. It would be a 53-yarder, which might be a yard or two outside of Ethan Albertson's range. As long this year as 50. Aggies one for one today on fourth down. Heavy pressure on the front side. Johnson has to get rid of it, and it's hauled in. What a catch. That's Terrell Warner, his third first down catch during this drive alone. So they brought pressure on Jonah. So let's look at Jonah back there. So here comes a pressure. He runs out of the out of the pocket. He rolls a little bit, which I like because then it really opens the field up a little bit. 
and Terrell breaks across the middle there and easily pops it to him for that first down. Warner goes for 16 yards on that hookup. Aggies with a fresh set of downs. Escobar to the right of Jonah Johnson, the quarterback. Johnson, a pump fake and a toss. Wide receiver, wide open, and it's Jared Wyatt in the end zone on senior day. That's just a nice read right there by Jonah. They run a guy out into the flats, so they've been throwing the ball to the flats to the flats. So here they come. They run someone out kind of into the flat area, and then you run Jarrett on the back side towards the end zone. They look down at the short receiver and took their eyes off Jarrett for a minute, and Jonah made a perfect pass. That was just a nice touch on that. You kind of see it right here. He's nice and poised, and he just lays that thing in there. Just great touch. 20-yard connection. Point after from Albertson is good. Well, Tatiana talked about Jared Wyatt's story earlier. One of the good guys for sure. The Wiley Texas native finds the end zone on senior day. Aggies ahead 21 to 6, and Tatiana Favela is standing by with NM State Athletics Director Marty Omocha. Hey, that's right, guys. I'm now joined with Mario Mocha, the Athletics Director for New Mexico State. Now, Mario, this is a unique game against New Mexico State and UMass, playing for the first time, and they're both independents. Can you elaborate on that? I think when you're trying to, when you're independent, and you're trying to build the schedule. You're always looking at the other independents. So we've played Liberty. Obviously, we played BYU, and now uh, a series against UMass, which I think is a great series for us. Awesome, and switching gears, we do have men's basketball coming up this Tuesday. New Mexico State is 5-1, and we do play against our rival, UNM. What can fans expect for that game? Well, you know, it's Native American History Month, so we're going to uh, do a big celebration there. We're also going to uh, celebrate with all the firefighters. Uh, so we'll have a lot of stuff going on in addition to the Battle of I-25. So we're pretty excited for a huge basketball game. Awesome. We're looking forward to it, and we'll definitely be there. Adam, Danny, back to you. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you to Mario Mocha. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center, the official health care partner of Aggie Athletics. 21 points so far in the first half of the Aggies offensively. And Danny, they have scored a three of their four offensive drives so far, which is a far cry for the previous three weeks. Yeah, no doubt about it. They have all everything working for them, right? They have the run. We have Jerron Price with two run TDs and then a throwing TD. I think when you start running the ball, it opens things up. And, uh, yeah, Coach Martin, Martin is calling a great game down there and mixing things up, keeping them off balance. Let's see if the defense can hold now. UMass had a punt on their first two drives and then got a touchdown run from Jared Chisari on the third offensive drive. And a flag comes in pre-snap again. Offside, number 98 of the defense. Crossing the neutral zone, creating reaction by the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. That's our lineman, Marcus Buckley, who's had an interesting junior year. He missed the first eight games of the season with a leg injury, and he's now been playing the last couple of weeks. That'll make it first down and five yards for UMass. Pistol back is Merriweather. Quick toss near side, Rico Arnold, and he is tackled immediately by Cyrus Dumas. Nine-yard connection. Arnold, his team best 26th catch of the season. Yeah, those cornerbacks, they, they play fast. They came up. Watch how quick he comes up. So he's in back at five yards. That's a quick toss, and as soon as the ball's there, he's on him right away. Great closing speed. Second down and short for UMass. And off goes to Merriweather, running diagonally, breaks the tackle of Dumas, and a flag comes in late near the Aggies' sideline on that tackle there from Jock alone. Merriweather was down on the sideline before he's helped up by one of his offensive linemen. Jack 
Let's see what happens here at the end of the end Personal of the play. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Him. Number 12, defense. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. That was on Kayla Mills with that late hit. Yeah, I think when, you, when you're back there and you come running up, so I was a safety, knowing that that happens sometimes, but when the, once they get to the white and they're getting deeper into that white on the side, you have to learn to just stop and slow and because they will call that. Zero's been the quarterback today for UMass. We have not seen Brady Olsen yet. Zero looking to throw now. He'll tuck it in run. He scoots by Chris Ojo, and he's up near the first down marker. Good run by Zero of six yards. He was mobile the first couple of times he played this year, and he's shown that mobility here today. He is, but he pulled up a little limp right now, getting into the sidelines, but that was a great execution because he rode the fake deep, and you can see how everyone is going one direction and it just confuses everyone, and then he pops out with the ball. Now you have to close from the backside, and the Eggs did that, but not until he got some extra yards in there. So now we're gonna see tight end Josiah Johnson, who is used at both quarterback and tight end, very unconventional. He's in at quarterback, but first a flag comes in. False start, number 82, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. That's our wide receiver, Melvin Hill, fifth-year redshirt junior from Mobile, Alabama. This cannot be easy on the offense when you're constantly changing quarterbacks, which has been the case much of the year for UMass. Johnson, a big tight end and also a very big quarterback, of course. 6'5", 235, redshirt sophomore from Jacksonville. Was a high school quarterback in a wing T offense in Jacksonville. And he will run it here, and he runs it up to the 35-yard line. A gain of six for big Josiah Johnson out of Jacksonville. Yeah, you know, when he's got the ball and he's running that, that fake up the middle, he falls in right behind it. That makes it really tough for the Aggies to figure out, well, who has the ball? And then you end up with Johnson, who is a big guy at 6'5", like you said, and he's taking that with a lead blocker, in essence, and it just makes it tough to shut that down. Merriweather to Johnson's right. They fake the handoff to Merriweather. He is hit initially. He's going to be short of the first down. But he still manages to scoot up to the 33. So he gets two. He was going to be stopped for no gain if the Aggies were able to drive it back on the first play. Yeah, the, the hitting is just remarkable. I think he ran into Trevor and a couple other linebackers in the middle there. I mean, he got popped, and there was just nothing there at all. But he bounced back and had enough wherewithal to say, okay, i got to get back and try to get some positive yards out of it. Fourth down, two yards to go for UMass. And Merriweather able to explode up to the 30, gets the first down. He needed two, he gets four. UMass staying with that running game. We talked about the running game, talked about how that's been their, their thing that they're going to go to. They've getting, they're moving the ball quite nicely there. I would just stay with it if I were them. For the Ags, you got to figure out a way that's going to be, hey, you have to shut it down. You have to make them want to throw the ball instead of just come out and set up to run the ball. UMass for the year averaging 135 rushing yards per game, only 155 per game through the air. Zeros back in a low throw. It's a forward pass. It was intended for wide receiver Isaac Ross, but it was towards his shoe tops. So we're bringing pressure. So now coaches, Coach Paziani is going to dial up some more pressure so we can put some more pressure on the quarterback. UMass sees this. They know that. And so now they're going to try to dump the ball out. But their passing hasn't been so effective yet. So I'd stick with it. You'd have to try to go get them and don't let them sit back in there. Redshirt freshman Garrett Zuno out of Lakewood, Ohio, are in second down at 10. Merriweather in motion. They swing it out his way, looking for yards after the catch. Gets away from Ojo and crawls up right at the sticks. Good yards after the catch for the big 225-pound running back, Merriweather. Ojo's a short tackler, too, so I'm surprised he didn't drag him down there. He had to jump off a push off a block to get there, but he just couldn't bring him down 
And they had good presence running the ball, too. Put his arm down there and just kept pushing away. Set him up for a third and short. Third down and one yard to go. UMass 0 for 4 today on third down. The previous play is under further review. All right, so they're going to review the previous play, Danny. Probably trying to see Merriweather was down, you think? It, it could be that he, they thought he was down or, or maybe um, saw that, well, maybe the mark, they got a bad mark on there. Right now it's third down and one, but they will review it to see where the ball should be marked. Was Merriweather down? That's one of the question marks as well. So a timeout here with under two left in the first half, and it's been a good first half of the Yankees. Had 21 to six here in the season finale, trying to finish off strong on a high note. And we'll step aside. Final two minutes in half one. When do you come back? So they were checking the mark, Danny, and they do give the first down to UMass. So first down and 10 from the 20 for UMass instead of third and one. UMass will get the ball to start half two, trying to inch a little bit closer late in half one. Quarterback is Zero. Zero throwing across the middle. He had a man, but he overthrew his tight end. Josiah Johnson, who was wide open near the five-yard line. Oh, he was he was really wide open. So they went in motion. They had numbers. So once they go in motion, the quarterback can see that they're in a zone. They're not in man. So it looks like they had more numbers over there than the Aggies. And he just couldn't make the throw. It just didn't feel, feel like he was comfortable back in there. So he glitched once, comes back, across the middle. You can see how wide open he is. That's just that's that's a touchdown. And for the Aggies, we got to find out where he's coming from. Mentioned this earlier, Zero is only completing 46% of his passes this year. One touchdown, three interceptions this year. Merriweather stays on his feet. He's able to burst through a hole, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown run number four this year for Ellis Merriweather, the second UMass rushing score. And the Minutemen will try to turn this into a one-score game on the point after. We've talked about Merriweather and how hard he runs the ball. He gets a good block up there by the defensive or by the offensive line. He breaks into that second level, and there's no one there. So it's an easy one to take that one right to the house. But what a hard running running back. Cameron Carson missed an extra point earlier. Thought maybe UMass would try to go for two right now. Instead, they will kick, and they make it an eight-point game. We knew this rushing attack was really good for UMass, and it's been on full display after the 20-yard touchdown run by Merriweather. A 10-play drive, 75 yards, covering 4 minutes and 57 seconds. And, they're, and the blocking up front, the offensive line, they're creating some big gaps in there, and so as long as we're not in position where you can stop something like that, why would you want to throw the ball? You're absolutely right. And the other for the Aggies, you got to figure out a way to shut down this run because you're just going to see that again and again and again. So we got to figure out which gap, where he is, and try to be play some gap control defense and protect that side and don't let him break the corner. Now the good news is for the Aggies is they will get the football with a minute 41 left here in the half. And this is plenty of time. In fact, last week in Kentucky, we saw the Aggies drive the ball down the field in 45 seconds to get a late field goal in the first half. And we've seen them score quickly. They only need about 30 or 45 seconds at times, Danny. We'll see if they can drive down and finish off the half strong here. Yeah, you know, Jonah's already hit Andre down the middle in that big long pass. So if they sit back in a zone, the Aggies can get back in that in that area, and he's got plenty of time to get down. And you'd want to use as much of the clock as possible. Minute 41, try to use it all up and then put points on the board. Jonah Johnson, 10 for 13 today for 178 and the throwing touchdown to Jared Wyatt. He has just his powers here inside UMass territory. The first catch at home this year for powers. His previous five all came on the road. 
Nice route, so he makes it look like he's going to run a deep kind of uh, a post pattern in there, but stops and pops back out. The cornerback turns completely around, and when that happens, that's an easy, easy pitch and catch right there. Powers had a 41-yard catch a week ago. He gets a 34-yarder right here. Into UMass territory, the Aggies will throw again on first down across the middle. There's Andre Bodison, who is speared down to the turf by former walk-on safety Tanner Davis. You know, crossing in front of a safety, that's always what's going to happen. So again, they sit in this zone, and we've seen this pass to Andre uh, many a times. This is the pass before that where he, they had a big one. Jawan Price is loose, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown to run up 24, his third rushing touchdown this afternoon. Well, ideally, it's to use the clock and score, but if you can score in four plays, five plays, or whatever it is, you should do it. So it's Jawan Price. Look at the hole that's there. That's set up because of all the big passes downfield. So they're sitting back waiting for a big pass. Coach dials up a quick draw handoff to Jawan Price who just takes it in for the score. Rushing touchdown in quarter one, two rushing touchdowns in quarter two, and the point after is blocked by UMass. We've seen a point after botched on both sides today. First it was UMass earlier, and now it's NM State here, and that could be costly down the road as well. 24-yard touchdown run for Jawan Price, his third rushing touchdown here in the first half. Well, they only needed 30 seconds there, Danny. Three plays, 75 yards. A couple of long passes to Powers and Bodison, and then the long touchdown run for Price. Yeah, and when you have those long passes, like I was saying, it, it loosens up the defense because now they're sitting back in a zone saying, we're not going to give you that long pass. So coach says, fine, you, you sit back deep enough. I'll give it to Price, and he is fast enough where he can make you miss an open field and take it to the house and make a house call there. Nice job by Price. So the lead is only 14 instead of 15. Now the question is, did you leave too much time for UMass, Danny? That's kind of minute 11. That's, that's plenty of time for them to get downfield. Now they've been primarily running the ball, so that'll be a challenge on running the ball. But they moved the ball in the last series quite easily. So the, let's see what the Aggies can do defensively to shore up that run. Ethan Albertson will kick off. And it will be a touchback through the end zone. Coming up at halftime, Tatiana will visit with the Chancellor, Dr. Dan Arvizu. And she will also visit with DJ Downs, the former director of marketing for New Mexico State Athletics. He's in town today. He's currently working for the Arizona Coyotes as their senior marketing manager. So DJ's in town, and Tatiana will visit with him today. Wave the Wonder Dog for the final time this year. UMass has a minute 11 to play with. And M State has scored on four of their five offensive drives. Four touchdowns at five drives so far in the first half. Penalty flag comes in. Our referee today is Derek Anderson. Ball start, number 68, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. That's our left guard, Helber Fagundis, sophomore from Massachusetts. Fourth penalty today for 30 yards for UMass. And Merriweather is taken down immediately by Big D and Lazarus Williams. So the penetration on the on the defensive line, anytime you can get into the backfield, and we've had a little Mexico stunt State. where you crossed up front. This and is once a 30 you second make, timeout. Once you get that penetration in the backfield, there's just nothing you can do. You just blow game up the play operator. before it even starts. 107 on the game clock. 107. Fourth tackle for loss this year for Williams, and Doug Martin uses a timeout here. He feels like maybe his offense will be able to get back on the field. But just a little bit over a minute left here in the first half. Second down and 18 for UMass. 
They're going to run it with Merriweather. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, a gain of eight for Ellis Merriweather. Timeout, New Mexico State. It's their second of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. I like this, Danny, because it looks like the Aggies are going to get the football back, and they just scored yep. a touchdown in 30 seconds, so yep. who knows? Yeah, and so as soon as they took that timeout, it's like, yeah, you know what? We can get the ball back, and we can put more, sport, uh, more scores on the board. And I like that. I like the, ag the aggressiveness. And up front, they're playing very solid. So the last few times we saw some stunts being performed out front there for the defensive line. And uh, when they start doing that and they don't pick it up, that's where you get the penetration and you blow up the plays before they happen. So let's see if they can do something here on third down and try to create a punting situation. The UMass offensive drives today. Two punts and two rushing touchdowns. Chisari and Merriweather. Another give to Merriweather, and he has nowhere to go. Josh Ferguson, Lama Levea, and a couple of other black jerseys right on it. And UMass timeout, will have New to Mexico punt. New Mexico State, this is their final timeout you know, of the half. This is when a 30 second When you have a good running timeout. back like Merriweather is, the ideal thing is to put as many people as you can on him. First guy, you have to hold on because help is coming. But look at the help that's coming. And that's what you like to see from a defense, an aggressive style. Player Lots number of hats to the ball. Number 69. So now, Danny, you have zero timeouts, 53 seconds left to work with. Ethan Albertson has shown a very, very good leg this year. He has hit from 50 in each of the previous two weeks. It's a two-score lead right now, but you would love to have a three-score lead heading into halftime here in the finale. Lawrence Dixon back deep around the 30. George Georgiopoulos, junior out of Greenville, South Carolina. He's averaging 44 yards per punt. It's a low line drive kick. Takes an Aggie bounce initially, then a UMass bounce, and Dixon will dart out of the way. It's going to be inside the 25. A 52-yard line drive kick. Wow. A good one for Georgiopoulos. Yeah, that flipped the field in a hurry. So the important thing here is let's see what UMass does. If they come out and sit in that zone, when they're in that deep zone, Jonah's been able to just pick them apart with guys finding the seams that can that can find, they can just sit down in there and Jonah's just been popping the ball to them because there's no pressure on them. So let's see if they dial up some pressure. I'd be offensive line, be looking for some pressure because I would not let him go sit back there and just pick us apart all day long. This is it's almost exactly the situation the Aggies were in last week at Kroger Field in Lexington. They had just over 40 seconds left. They scored three points in the final seconds of the first half. Here's Juwan Price, who has had a good first half. The ball popped loose late. But he was already down. It's been a good first half for Price. He gets four right there, 11 carries for 89, three rushing touchdowns for the retro freshman from Peoria, Arizona. Johnson, 12 for 15 for 229 through the air. He's going to step up, has no chance of getting out of bounds. He is able to move the chains, so the clock will stop for the chains to move, and then they'll restart it here, and there's under 20 seconds left. Yeah, just take one big deep shot down there, or stop it here, and then take one shot downfield, see if we can't set Ethan up for a long field goal attempt. You would likely need the 33, maybe the 34 or 35 of UMass to give Albertson a decent shot at kicking one. Right now, the Yankees got their own 37. So you might need 30 yards here just to be safe. Only 12 seconds left. Johnson back to throw, looking on the sideline, and Jared Wyatt was still in his route as the ball whistled by him. Well, if you're Jonah Johnson, Right there, you're probably rushing things, which is to be expected with 12 seconds left. Right, you're thinking three seconds of play, get the ball out of my hands on the break and see if he can't catch it. It just was the timing was just off a bit. Third down and 10. Only nine seconds left here in the first half. Now the Aggies will play it conservative and run it with Juwan Price and 
the clock will run out here in the first half. So, a good offensive first half for the Yagis comes to a close. They had five drives. They scored four touchdowns, only had a punt once. Jonah Johnson was sharp, and Juwan Price found the end zone three times, rushing the football. Halftime comes your way next. You might have won the toss today, but chose to defer. The Aggies scored first for the fourth straight week. They scored first against Alabama two weeks ago and Kentucky last week, and scored first going back to the previous home game against Utah State as well three games ago. So UMass will receive to start half number two, and it will be a touchback. Minutemen will have it at the 25-yard line after a very successful running first half, but not so much passing. The Minutemen and Garrett Zero only threw for 20 yards in the first half, but they ran for 127. And it all starts with stopping Ellis Merriweather. We'll see if the Aggies have a little more success doing that here in the final two quarters of the season. Yeah, they're going to have to do that, but you, certainly they've missed some passes too, right? So they had a couple of down the field where it hit the receiver or they just missed the receiver. So those will be there. They'll probably go back to them, but start with the run. Garrett Zero, five for eight for just 20 yards. And as Danny mentioned, he had some receivers earlier and just could not connect with them. He is mobile, though. He's going to run it here, and he will sidestep out of bounds in front of Giacalone and Dumas. We saw a run of 30-plus earlier for Zero. This one goes for four yards on the first play from scrimmage here in half number two. Brady Olsen, the most experienced quarterback this season for UMass. We have not seen him so far. It's been all Zero. And a little bit of tight end Josiah Johnson, who's used in the Wildcat. False start, number 72, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's our freshman right guard, Ethan Mottinger, out of North Attleboro, Massachusetts, one of 62 freshmen this year for UMass. Get a little flinch in there, and everyone will point you out immediately. There's no trying to get by with anything. That's penalty number six on the Minutemen so far today. The give is to Merriweather. Runs into one of his offensive linemen. And he's taken down by a couple of Aggies, including Garrett Bishop. Aggies are without Justin Segura today on the defensive line, but... Pretty healthy defensively outside of that. You know, looking at this gap control, they're trying to stay in there and play gap solid defense, and, and they have, and they've played good. Merriweather, I've seen him a couple times today bounce into someone and then bounce back and then still go forward. You're going to have to tackle him. You just can't have him bounce around because he will break one for a long way. Good defense so far. With his 61 yards today, he is over the 1,000-yard plateau for the season. Only needed 30 rushing yards coming in. Zero will air it out downfield. It's caught by Rico Arnold. He gets away from Kayla Mills, and he's in for the touchdown. Only 20 passing yards for Zero before that toss to Arnold, and Rico Arnold has his third touchdown catch of the season. You know, Adam, it seems like coming out into the, into the third quarter, we've seen this for a number of times this year, is that the, the, they'll go for the big ball. They'll go for the big play. And this, they did go for the big play. Caleb Mills, the free safety, he's going to help out with that. But instead of going back towards the end zone, he came very flat. And when he come flat like that, you have the receiver run by you, and it creates a big play if he catches it. And he did, and it's a big play TD. Carson is good on the point after. Arnold, the top receiver coming in for UMass, leads them in catches and receiving yards this year. And that time Zero was our target. That was a perfect throw to Rico Arnold. Yeah, and you see Caleb Mills right here. So, so Caleb should be back deeper. He's the deepest, the deepest guy. No one should get behind him. And when there is a pass completed, you have to take the correct angle there. And it was kind of a flat angle. It was a good play because we're playing run. We're up in there saying, hey, we're going to force you to run. Then we jump out. 
And they just, uh, no pressure and lots of time to sit back there. He did not miss that pass, did he? Adam? No, he sure did not. So now we see Zero does have the arm, that's for sure. Once again, he started last week, his first start of the season, did start one game during the abbreviated four-game 2020 season for UMass. He, he's in a very, situ, a very similar situation to Aggie backup quarterback Weston Egan, where he's a third-year freshman. So he's a redshirt freshman, but he had the redshirt year, the short year in 2020. And now this year, he's a redshirt freshman. So very similar situation to Weston Egitz. This is Juwan Price on the return, and we've had a healthy dose of penalty flags today. We get a marker coming in again. During the kick, holding number two, the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty. First down. Well, if you look at that kick, there was some serious popping going on there. I saw a couple blocks where guys that were upended there. I didn't see the, the hold. The hold is, is too bad, but man, there's some serious contact in there. Jerron Price gets this. He can break those. And let's see if you can see the hold there in the bottom half. Yeah, they're kind of grabbing them. And once you grab the jersey, they'll get you every single time. That's our defensive back, Chris Bell, on special teams. Let's see if the Aggie offense can pick up right where they left off in half number one. Passes whistle near side to Jared Wyatt. He had a touchdown catch in the first half. He will finish up a yard shy of the marker. So a nine yard pickup for the grad student from Wiley, Texas. Again, you're leaving Jonah back there with time to throw the ball and you play off Jared. That's an easy one all day long. Aggies are without Cole Harity once again this week and Cole was playing very well, but a shoulder injury is not allowing him to play in the final game of the regular season. That's Alex Escobar, and he moves the chains. A run of four yards for the team captain and former walk-on. Well, he's a hard little runner. He gets in there in between those uh, guards and tackles, and he just makes everything, every, every yard. It's just hard-earned, but just a tough runner. Aggies really hurt this year by injury at wide receiver. Dom Jacinto was supposed to be a star. He was injured in game number two. Robert Downs has been out for a while. Cole Harity, even going back to the preseason when Tevis Abraham suffered a season-ending knee injury before the season even began. That's Terrell Warner once again. That is catch number four for Warner. Tops on the Aggies, it goes for seven. So other guys have had to step up and they've done so and then some, Danny. Yeah, you know, we've talked about six guys getting a catch at this the first half, and he continues just to find the receivers. They're sitting back, and they're five, ten yards off the receivers on the ends, and those are easy pitches. Johnson downfield. There's Jared Wyatt. Breaks the tackle, stays on his feet, and he's up near the 40 inside UMass territory. We probably don't give him enough credit for how strong he is at 6'2", 200 pounds. Yeah, and you look at the fake right here. So they have someone in the flats that has their arms up, and it's like, it's me, it's me. So everyone comes this way, but he turns that corner and pits that perfect spot right in there. 30-yard connection. A lot of explosion plays offensively for Johnson, at quarterback today. They stick it in the belly of Juwan Price, and a flag comes in. It'll likely be... On the Aggies for holding as Price holding, scoots up to number yards. 76, offense. It's a 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Yeah, that's a rare mistake. Our left tackle, Sage Dockstadter, making his 49th career start today. School record, also playing in his 51st career game, also a school record. He doesn't make many mistakes, Danny. He's probably going to be playing on Sundays here in a couple of years. Well, and he is a big guy, without a doubt. It's nice to see his family here supporting him. I think he just wanted to make sure you said his name out loud. So it's like, okay, I'll have to hold one just so Adam will call me out and let everyone know I'm here. He is a, is a great guy. And it's a, it's been here since 17. Amazing. Yeah, you mentioned he came in as a 17-year-old. And he's really, really grown up during his time here. Flag comes in, Johnson downfield. Lawrence Dixon was tingled up with Najee Logan, the linebacker. 
And we'll get the call from a referee today, Derek Anderson. Holding number 76 offense. 10 mm. yard penalty, replay first down. That's too straight on Doc Statter. It's okay. So I, I don't have anything for the second one. The second one is you can't do that, but let's see what happens in there. He did get him hooked just a bit and uh, exposed, and, and they, they'll call you. And they did. Puts it really deep. Those two games in the SEC were very, very important for Doc Statter, trying to get good tape against premier competition. And all signs pointed to him grading out very well. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda back into UMass territory. Pinballs up near the original line of scrimmage, so the Aggies get a good chunk back on a 16-yard hookup. It's a great pass, and, and the idea coming across the middle is do not put the ball up and high because that'll be like candy to a safety in there. He puts it down in there right in the bread, bread basket, and he just went, goes down right away so he doesn't take too many big pops because everyone's converging on you. Aggies need the 31 of UMass. Johnson pump fakes, rolls right. Now he will run inside the 40, inside the 35, inside the 30. First down for Jonah Johnson with his legs. He starts his slide at the 26. That's where they mark him after a gain of 20. Hey, jailbreak. We have Jonah on jailbreak getting outside there. And so he's trying to go downfield. Lots of good blocking there. Rolls out, keeps the play alive. Everyone's covered, so he just takes it up there. Juwan Price has a great block for him right there that gives him some extra yardage. Aggies moving the ball well again. On first down and 10, front side pressure. Air mails it towards the end zone, and it's out of the reach of Jared Wyatt, who had a touchdown in that area earlier in half one. Yeah, that would have been a tough one to get in there. That was a good try, and if you miss, you're going to miss deep and wide or outside, so they're not going to have a chance to pick that. But I think they pretty well had that one soaked up and co uh, covered and not be able to do anything with it. Uh, but, you know, as long as they sit back in this zone, this two-deep zone, there's going to be areas that he can pick on. The Aggies have taken more deep shots than usual. Bota sit in motion right to left. Handoff goes to Jawan Price, finds a big hole inside the 10, cuts up the middle, and he's in again. Fourth rushing touchdown today for the redshirt freshman, and he lets them know in the end zone. Just a great job right there. And once again, the, the run is set up by the pass. They sit back in a deep zone, and we're going to stay back and not give you those big passes downfield. It's like, okay, fine, we'll give it to Jerron Price. Once he breaks the first level, there's no one there in the open field. It's a house call for Price. He's counting four <laughs> rushing touchdowns. Twenty-six yard touchdown run for Jawan Price, his fourth of the day. The extra point is good from Albertson. Thirteen carries, one hundred and twenty-two yards, nine point four per run. Rush. Price extends the Aggie lead back to two scores early on in half two. Aggies have had five touchdown drives already today. Two very long ones, Danny, one of 92. This one goes for 98 plays. Results in the fourth touchdown run today for Juwan Price. He is running all over the place here. He is, you know, you get him in the open and he's a very fast running back, very swift. He has great moves and it's just hard to bring him down. And as you can see, he got four and he reminded you of that when he, he did, got to the yes. end zone. Absolutely. I think you can do that when you get four. You can do whatever you want when you get four. Price came into this game with six for the year. So a good year has turned into a great year. Ten rushing touchdowns now this season in 12 games, and he's only a redshirt freshman. Young man from Peoria, Arizona. We'll step aside early on in quarter three. Aggies up 14. Adam Young, Danny Nee, Tatiana Favela with you. Doug Martin's offense has had a very, very good game so far, scoring 34. It would be 35 if it wasn't for a missed extra point earlier. 
Zero and UMass back to offense after a good drive for them as well and a deep pass. And this one is almost picked off. It was deflected by Katy, Texas native Josh Ferguson. Throwing the ball in lots of traffic there, coming across the middle, but I think there was an open lane. If we didn't get a hand in there, it could have been caught. Trying to get some pressure on the quarterback, but oh, nice, nice way to get your paw out there because that's all it takes. Neither team has forced a turnover today. The Aggies defensively coming off a game with four forced turnovers at Kentucky. Zero will fling it out to the outside for Collins. The grad transfer from NC State is wrestled out of bounds by senior Kayla Mills on the sideline. Kayla Mills, nice job there. He saw that was happening, it was developing, and he got out there in a hurry. You know, Kayla Mills, is just, it's just a great, uh, great story, you know, being the wide receiver coming in here, playing now safety. Good tackling. Coaches say he just likes learning. He wants to be coached. Pretty impressive what he's been able to do. He leads the Aggies in tackles coming in. And really did not have a whole lot of time to learn that position at safety. Zero the quarterback on third and five. They give it to Merriweather, and he is going to be stuffed. A little over two yards shy of the yardage needed. That's a great series right there, a great stop. Certainly gonna spread them out. So now that you've been able to throw the ball a little bit, and now you're gonna run the ball in the middle there and have lots of lots of people near it. But who is it that's finishing it? It's Trevor Brohard coming screaming in there to make the big tackle, big hit. Who else, right? He right. always makes the big plays, it seems like. Georgiopoulos is kicking off to Dixon here on the punt. And here comes the kick, another low line drive kick that UMass is hoping will take a favorable bounce, and it will. Dixon unable to touch it, and this is going to be a boomer. It will roll all the way down to the 10-yard line. What a punt by George Georgiopoulos. 58-yard boomer. Aggie ball from the 10 after this. That's a good point too, Danny, is he was trying to find his way on the field yep. and quite frankly, the wide receiver room was loaded. He probably wasn't gonna get a lot of action, so they moved him to safety and now he's been really impactful there. Yeah, there's no doubt. When you get to division one, it's like, where, where do you need me? I'm there. It's been a big day for Juwan Price. He is the first Aggie since Jason Huntley to score four plus touchdowns in a game. Huntley had four against Alcorn State on November 3rd, 2018. But Price has done all four rushing. That day, Huntley had two rushing, one receiving, and also one of his five career kick return touchdowns. Nowhere to go here. Good tackle made by Pia, the grad student defensive lineman for UMass. Hey, that's great company for Juwan Price with Huntley, right? Huntley was one heck of a running back. The Mexico State Aggies had some, have had some really great running backs of recent, and to share a stat with Huntley, that's good stuff right there. Huntley, one of Price's role models. He got to spend some time with him a couple of years ago. Learned a lot from Jason Huntley, who's still in the NFL. Johnson will throw on third down. Another great catch on the sideline made by Terrell Warner. That is his team best fifth catch today, Danny. This one goes for 12. Yeah, Terrell's got great hands in the pass. I want to mention the pass because they're out there on that. They're in a zone, and it wasn't like he was standing, you know, all, all alone and there was no one there. You had to thread that ball to the outside. So you can see he's got pressure on him, and he's still, still able, Jonah, to get that ball out there to Terrell to make the catch. No issues moving the football today. The Aggies have accumulated 465 yards of offense and a sliding catch is made inside UMass territory. Jared Wyatt, catch number four for him for 70 plus on senior day. Yeah, they're trying to get a little pressure on Jonah, but it's just not happening. They're able to hold him out there. So you get a crossing route across the middle there and he's just picking him apart little by little. That one goes for 21 for Jared Wyatt. Very different school for him, Bowling Green, Navarro College, and now finishing out his career with the Aggies. 
Escobar, the running back. They'll give it to Alex Escobar, who stays patient, looks for a hole, shimmies up to the 47-yard line. We still have not seen Omari Samuels today. Samuels, in the last three games, only two carries, zero yards. And a player is down for UMass on the D-line. So look at Alex right here. He's a very swift guy, and we talked about how he can stay low and just be impactful and just get those bruising yards. Those are some tough yards right there. The helmet came off initially. That's Tayshawn Holmes, junior from Virginia, transfer from Garden City Community College. This UMass D-line was already a little banged up coming in because of the injury to Billy Wooden, who left the game last week at Army in the first quarter with a leg injury. And Wooden's having a great year for UMass. We see Eli Johnson there. What a, what a great addition and had some great stories and how much fun everyone had with Eli in the press room and everywhere else. He's really been a great asset for New Mexico State. He's about to be a great coach. Said he's going to head back to Mississippi after the game and figure out his next path as a collegiate coach. He's probably going to be a grad assistant somewhere as Johnson Scamper is a yard shy of the marker. I would but I'll tell you what, he could be a full-time assistant right yeah, now, couldn't he? He could, and I, and I was just going to say, I think he'd be an easy grab for a grad assistant, right? Because he, he, is, uh, he has the mind of a coach, and he's been around many programs, and so he's seen a lot of things. So I think he would be a, a tremendous asset. Eli said this is a bittersweet day for him. He's been playing football since he was five years old, but he knows that he has a coaching career ahead of him. The Aggies only needed one. They're going to lose one here, and it's going to be fourth and two. Would you go for it, Danny? I think you would right here, right? I think all the marbles are there. You're just like all in on everything. The last game of the season, there's no use waiting for anything else. If you've had that one play you've been keeping in your pocket, the back pocket, I pull it out and use it right now. The Aggies two for two today on fourth down. Johnson's had a great day, 18 for 23 for 324, a touchdown, no picks. And a timeout is called by the Aggies. Timeout, New Mexico State. It's their first of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. I do not think they're going to second guess it. I think they just want to make sure they have the right play for fourth and two. Yeah, and you want to see what kind of defense they come out in and set up in. If they're back in the zone, or if you think you're going to play them in a man and go get them. So that kind of determines what you're going to call. Offense has really shown out today. We talked about this early on during the broadcast. The offense had been sputtering. NM State had not scored an offensive touchdown in the previous two games. They hadn't had a touchdown pass in four games, and they had gone 11 quarters without an offensive touchdown. All that is out the window now after posting 34 so far. And the Aggies have a season-high 494 yards of offense with a lot of time left in the game. Yeah. Jonas had a great game. He's thrown some great passes. Line to gain is the 40 of UMass. And Juwan Price. False start. Jumped. Number nine, offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. He was leading forward, and everybody in the stadium saw that one. On a day where he has virtually made zero mistakes, now the Aggies will choose to punt. Looks like it was going to be kind of that run-pass option they'll have with, um, with Juwan right there leaning into it, thinking, okay, I need to get to the 40. Let me lean and just got caught. Quiet day for Carlson, the punter. Aggies have only punted once today. That was our drive number two. Carlson having a good year out of Gilbert, Arizona. He boots it away. Eric Collins will call for a fair catch inside the five-yard line, so the field position will not be good for UMass. So the defense came out in the second half, Adam, and we see some of the things they're doing. They're little, doing little stunt plays up front where you have your, your 
tackles and your ends and your nose guards going, kind of crossing each other, trying to mix up the offensive linemen. And then they sprinkle in some blitzing with Brohard and some other ones in there. Just trying to keep the pressure there, but watch the run. Ball is at the five yard line for quarterback Garrett Zero and UMass. Pistol back is Merriweather in the end zone. He runs it past the five yard line. He's up to the 10 yard line. They'll mark him down at the 11. So a good run of six and more breathing room for UMass. 17 carries today, 69 yards for Merriweather. The big number for him was to get to 30 to reach that 1,000-yard plateau. He got there and then some. Six foot two, two and a quarter redshirt junior from Alpharetta, Georgia. Aggies show pressure. The handoff goes to Merriweather. He finds a hole. He's past the 15, up to the 17. A gain of six and a first down for UMass. That's just great blocking up front by UMass. Trevor Brohart shows, shows the blitz. He comes into the A-gap. He's standing right in the A-gap, and that's exactly kind of where the play is going. So they just brush him down or push him down, and it creates a big gap, and it runs right where Trevor was normally playing at that middle linebacker spot. Right back to Merriweather. Why not? Tackled from behind by Donovan King. And then some extracurriculars after the tackle. Gain of four for Merriweather. You know, we've seen that all day long, so I don't, I don't think anyone can say, well, either team, they're not, they're not playing for it. They are letting it all out there at the end of this game here, at the game for sure. Yeah, it's hard to tell who wants it more. We thought maybe one of these teams would... Just kind of go through the motions today. Both programs are 1 in 10. Both programs have played extremely hard here on the final day of the regular season. The Aggies have lost seven straight, UMass five in a row. They've lost 16 straight in true road games. Zero throws, oh. and it's almost intercepted. DJ McCullough was staring towards the end zone looking for his fourth pick of the year. You know, after the Kentucky game when, when we talked and I said, man, I, I just like Adam. I just like our cornerbacks who are playing so aggressive. And this is one where he read the quarterback's eyes. He saw exactly what was going to happen with this quick screen to the outside. And as soon as they turned to throw the ball, as soon as he released it, he stepped up right there. And there's nothing between him and the goal line but grass. And he couldn't pull it in. DJ had six all over that one. Third and six for Zero in UMass. Really struggling today on third down. Four out wide. Running back Merriweather. They're going to run it. He gets the first down and then some. Merriweather into Aggie territory to the 10 and he is gone. What a day for Ellis Merriweather. It's those big plays we talk about, the Aggies and the big plays that always seem to come back and bite them. Here's one right here. He just breaks the containment up front and then takes it to the house. Lots of guys chasing. Let's see what happens up in there. You end up with a nice hole for him to step into. He gets past the linebackers, and there's no defensive secondary to knock him down. There's Caleb. There's others giving chase, but it's just too late. We saw this a week ago against Army on third and mid or third and long situations, and this one was third and six. UMass has opted to run the football, and Merriweather finds a way to get the first down. In this case, the first down and then a whole lot more. A 79-yard touchdown run for Merriweather. Puts him at 158 for the game. And it keeps him in the game. And, and these big plays are the ones that the Aggies have really had a hard time trying to figure out how to shut down. So you get a pl big play like this, it keeps the other team in there, whereas if you're able to give them, even, even if it's a decent play at 20 yards, not a huge play, it still gives you a chance to stay in the game defensively. Both teams have run the football well today. Juwan Price has four rushing touchdowns. Jared Chisori only has one carry, went for a touchdown for UMass. Jonah Jouts, it's been really good. 
Found Jared Wyatt right there. This was the first rushing touchdown for Merriweather. A couple of long explosive plays in this quarter. The first one came on a catch by Rico Arnold. He went 73 yards for the touchdown. And then right here on third and six, Merriweather finds the end zone for UMass and makes it a one touchdown game. Outstanding work there by our crew, led by Vinny Conway today, our director, engineer, Alex Ramirez, Rito Rodriguez, our producer, Anthony Casals, our talent stats, Adam Young, Tatiana Favela, Danny Nee with you. Great to have you with us today for the season finale. Seen lots of offense today, Adam. A lot of scoring, a lot of things happen, some big plays, both teams moving the ball down the field there. Maybe it's going to come down to who can turn one over on defense. Yeah, we have not had a turnover yet today. On either side. Now, DJ McCullough will tell you he probably should have had a pick six moments ago. And the game right now would be totally different if he got it. Jawan Price trying to match what Merriweather just did. And Juwan is up near the first down marker. And we have another Minutemen player down. We've had that a lot today. You know, Juwan Price continues to port right in the middle there. You can kind of see the blocking up front there. Nice hole for Juwan to get his head into and then pick up some extra yardage and just lean forward into that. Player down for UMass is linebacker Jarrell Johnson, freshman from D.C. who leads UMass this year in tackles, sacks, forced fumbles, and fumble recoveries, having a really good freshman year. If they can get this core to stick around, Danny, they have so many freshmen who are getting valuable playing time this year that could have a whole lot of success down the road. Yes, a lot of changes in the program there. So they, they have a plan, and they're now got to figure out how to get the plan and start moving forward. Part of that is getting these freshmen, getting these other players healthy and keeping them healthy and add to the staff. And let's just uh, hope he's all right. That's Johnson, number 22 in white, who's down. Yeah, a whole lot of changes there in Amherst, Massachusetts. They announced this week that former Minutemen head coach and current Arizona DC Don Brown will return as head coach. There's a look at Alex Miller, who is the interim. Alex Miller actually played for Don Brown when he was an offensive lineman at UMass. Johnson, good sign there, will walk off pretty much on his own power. And this will be Don Brown's second stint as head coach at UMass. His stretch from 04 through 08 was the best stretch in program history. He's going to coach Arizona today in their season finale against ASU before heading to UMass. And then we'll see what happens there in Amherst when Don Brown arrives. Price again. He's been a little more patient today, Danny, than maybe he had been the last month or so. Yeah, I think as it's getting, especially as the game is getting a little longer, he's waiting for those holes to open up and probably the right thing, right? Because you have a lot of a lot of people that are blocking and moving in different directions. And so you just have to wait and sit and pick your spot. And when you do, then you go get it. He's fast enough to do that because he can plant and turn that north and south in a minute. Aggie's able to move the chains running the football. Three out wide on first down and 10 with a minute left here in the third quarter. Johnson back to throw. He's hit as he throws. Double coverage, and it is incomplete. Intended for Garcia Castaneda. It was almost intercepted out of bounds by free safety Dante Lindsay. Threw that one up there. That was one of those 50-50 ones he's going to throw up there. Pressure on Jonah. So now we knew that they were going to start bringing it, trying to figure out how to get him off balance. And you can kind of see it right there. He takes a pop and just lays that out there. Garcia Castaneda hampered by a hamstring injury the last couple of weeks. Had a big explosion reception early on in quarter one today. Johnson across the middle. Quick throw caught by Justice Powers, his second catch today, seventh during his junior year. Nice play coming across the middle there. So you want to get the ball, put it into his 
right into his letters and just let him pull it down before that safety comes in there and gives you tries to rock that thing out of your hands. Power is a big wide receiver, 6'4", 196, out of Inglewood, California. Johnson pump fakes, he throws, hooks up here with Terrell Warner. Outstanding tackle is made by Bryce Watts, the transfer from North Carolina. Gain of five for Warner. Yeah, you know, I think as long as they're giving Jonah time, he's going to find someone that's open in this case. Even if it's in the flats, you're still getting four or five yards at it. That's as good as a good run right there. Doug Martin tells Jonah Johnson, do not snap the football. We'll take this to the fourth quarter. Aggies 34, Minutemen 27, a this season the high. 526 yards of offense today for the Crimson and Y. Led by Johnson with 343, Price 136. The fourth quarter comes up next. 34 27 the score. Sage Doc Standard, big number 76 in black. And eight other seniors playing their final collegiate game today. Aggies trying to send them off on a high note and also snap a seven game losing streak. Both the Aggies and the Minutemen looking for their second win of the season. Another good offensive drive in motion here. And off to Price, running to right, and he is upended. What a play made by Tanner Davis, the former walk-on, a sophomore from Kingston, New York. Boy, Tanner, someone shot him right out of a cannon. He saw that developing, and this is the one where it's kind of stretched and drawn, drawn, gets to the outside, and if he gets the corner, he's off to the races. But in this case, they came screaming in there mm. and not going to give him the corner at all. Third down, five yards to go. The Aggies, a lot of success today on third down. Four for nine, only 37% for the year. Johnson under pressure, lost it, caught. Juwan Price looking for yards after the catch, he gets that. And he gets the first down. He needed to make a man miss, he did so to get the first down. Bring in pressure on Jonah. So we talked about how they're not gonna let him sit back there and pick him apart, so they went to get him. And so what he did is he had to, to get it out to his uh, relief guy right away, a little pop out to Juwan. Juwan knows he's short of the first down, has to throw a move or two and pick up that first down. That's a good job by both those guys. 13-yard catch and run. The Aggies with some trickery. Garcia Castaneda will throw it, and he throws it short of Terrell Warner. UMass did not bite. <laughs> I think we've seen that one before, and they were ready for it. But, yeah, let's take them all out. Don't leave anything in the bag. It, pull all your plays out here. It is reverse. Isaiah's going to stop and try to throw the ball out there, but they're on him. They're not mm. letting Terrell out of his sights. Second down and 10 from the 30. Aggies ahead by a score, trying to extend their advantage early on in the fourth here in the season finale. Johnson underneath, caught by Garcia Castaneda. And he's down to the 26, a four yard connection. And it will be third down and six yards to go. Man, those are, those are tough four yards right there, coming across the middle, and you're just smashed as soon as you pick it up. Not an extra yard right there. Those are tough yards. Helps them out, helps them up. I like it. Jonah Johnson today, 21 for 27, 357, and a touchdown. No interceptions. Need six yards here on a third down. They're going to run it with Alex Escobar. They are in field goal range, but a little unconventional, especially given it wasn't Juwan Price. Yeah, I was thinking more if you're going to try to get the ball to the outside there and pick up those extra yards, it's been open. Instead, we're going to go up the middle and try to get Alex the ball and just maybe play it safe, keep it in the middle, and set up this, uh, extra, this field goal attempt. This will be a 45-yard try from Ethan Albertson, who has connected from 50 in back-to-back -back weeks. He's 16 for 21 for the year. And a flag comes in. The kick was extremely low. And Albertson was given up there as the flag came in. Number 54, offense. Oh. 
Five yard penalty, fourth down. Well, Danny, now he's gonna have to go for a 50 yarder for the third straight week. Hey, there's no hill for a stepper. He's, he's been having, his leg has just been so impressive these last few games. Made from 50, two games ago at Alabama. They gave the Aggies an early three nothing lead. Made from 50 late in half one a week ago at Kentucky. Out of the hold of Josh Carlson from 50 yards for the third straight week. The kick from Albertson, it's on the way. It is good. What a season for Ethan Albertson. His leg has really been something these last few days, and so complete confidence, nice kick in there. Man, that's, that's just something right there. Getting everyone in on the act, great snap, great hold, and they knew it right away. And that is now six straight made field goals for the San Diego native. And three of those six have come from 50. Still trying to figure out his range, Danny, but if you look at that kick right there, he probably has 55, 56 in him, don't you think? Yeah, that was he plenty of leg on that one without a doubt. Pretty long drive there, 11 plays, only 43 yards, covering four minutes and 51 seconds. So the Aggies get three. They make it a two-score game. And they also eat some clock in the process early on here in the fourth. And now Albertson will kick off to NC State transfer Eric Collins. And he shows off his leg once again. You don't see many kickers, six foot two, 253. That's what Albertson is listed as. Yeah, he's a hoss for, for yeah. a kicker. Oh, no no doubt about it. But maybe that's why he can have so much leg in there. It's great. It's a great season, a great job this year. So it comes down to the defense again, Adam. Seems like we've been here, right? So now it's the big play, you know, the jailbreak, the big pass, the, the run that goes for 70 plus yards. Those jailbreak plays have the ones that have really brought the Aggies down. Really got to close in on those and keep everything in front of them. Zeros had a long passing touchdown in this half, and Merriweather has had a long rushing touchdown here in this half. Catch is made by Jared Chisari, and that's another tackle for loss. The second today for Chris Ojo, number 16 this year. It's a loss of seven. Chris Ojo, watch him. He is getting blocked, so he's got a blocker on him. That he's got to play off that block and still make a tackle. They get that block on Chris. He gets 10 yards. Chris blows that block up and makes a great tackle for loss. Boy, he is patting those stats on tackles for loss. Two weeks ago, Ojo really showed that he could play in the SEC. He had a season high, 13 tackles, nine solo, three for loss, and a forced fumble against Alabama. Zero will toss it to Merriweather. He makes the catch, and Ojo's there for the open field tackle. He can do it all. Junior from Sunland, California. He certainly has the wheels, and he can play sidelines to sidelines. The thing I like about this, Merriweather is a very good back, and he comes in there, and he doesn't try to make such a tackle that he misses. It's like blow him up or nothing. He makes a tackle and holds on, and that's what you need to do on those and just whatever positive yards they made, which isn't a lot, just leave it at that. Don't try to do any more. UMass two for eight on a third down this afternoon. They need the 35 yard line. Pistol back is Merriweather. They fake it to him, play action. Under heavy pressure, Zero escapes twice, plants his feet, throws it downfield, and it's incomplete. Dylan early in coverage. It was intended for the six foot five freshman, Anuma D.A.K. Yeah, Dil Dylan early was in good position. So let's just first see, we missed two potential sacks right there. Good job staying alive. 
throw it to the big tall guy up high. That's where you want to get it. And Dylan, he's on him, but that it would still have been hard to, to break that up because he is 6'5", and he goes up in the air, and his arms are up. That makes it very tough. Dylan, good job, though. Good, good position. It was Bo and Bishop who had the hurry, and Zuro was able to escape both of those guys. George Georgiopoulos punts it away to Dixon. We've seen this all day. It is low line drive kicks, Good grief. and it works every single time. He, he hasn't had a poor punt today. He has flipped the field every single time. Even when we have them pinned, we still come out, and they flip the field and get field position. His long this year is 66. This one goes for 60. Aggies ahead by two scores early on in quarter four. Beautiful Saturday for football here in the Mesilla Valley. 37-27 the score. NM State and UMass. First ever meeting between these two programs. They're far away, Danny, but they sure have a lot in common. FBS independence and uh, scheduling never easy, so it makes perfect sense to play each other. They're scheduled to play next year and in 2023, but that 2023 game, I guess we'll see because Athletics Director Marty Amocha has had to do some descheduling already because of the impending move to Conference USA that year. So we'll see if that alters that scheduled game for 2023 or not. Johnson will pull this one, and he slides just past the 20 up to the 21. He gets two yards. You know, Adam, that gives both teams a lot to play for. It, it does make them very similar, and there's a lot of things that they're both trying to get get their programs back in shape and put them on the right track. Independent, we've got, a, we've got an invitation to conference, excited about moving to a conference, but it still gives these teams a lot to fight for. UMass in Amherst, Massachusetts, so travel-wise, certainly not an easy trip. Johnson looking to throw, he throws it up to the 35, near midfield, Jared Wyatt again. And a late flag comes in. I don't know how he hung onto the football after three white jerseys were grabbing on him. Yeah, they, they really tried to put the lick to him after he got the ball there. Personal foul, Came across the middle mask, there. They have two safeties defense. that aren't even in the picture. That's how deep they the are. The run, so he gets behind down. everyone else and in front of those safeties, and he just catches the ball. But, yeah, he really took something after that, and they're going to give him some extra yardage. Yeah, big play gets even bigger. A late face mask on Nickelback to Ray Powell, and that'll slide the ball all the way down to the 34. That turns out to be a 46-yard explosion. Johnson back in the belly of Juwan Price. He is taken down from behind by linebacker Deshaun Ross, he was close to breaking another. Yeah, if Ross doesn't bring him down, that puts him one-on-one -on -one with the safety where he was 10 yards deep, and that could have been a tough one right there. So they barely hung on to that because that was almost a house call. Already four rushing touchdowns today for Juwan Price, the redshirt freshman. He gets six on the previous carry. Second down and four. Here's Price again, and this time the defensive line makes the stop for UMass, led by Cletus Mathurin, sophomore from Hartford, Connecticut. And it'll bring up third and short for the Aggie offense. The clock is moving, just over eight to go. Joda Johnson has thrown one touchdown pass today. It went to Jared Wyatt. He has thrown for 357 yards. Garcia, Castaneda in motion. Johnson back to throw. He hooks up here with Wyatt. Trying to break a tackle. Can't do so. But he's all the way down to the 12. That is a 21-yard catch and run for Wyatt. Another great play for him. Yeah, Jared, has. he's having a great senior day today, right? So here it is. First of all, great blocking. Gives him time in there. And he finds Jared coming across there in that little skinny post route right across the middle. They've just had some nice uh, connections today. Ball down to the 12. The Aggies trying to extend their 10-point advantage. They will swing it out for Garcia Castaneda. Lowers the shoulders inside the 10. He's down to the four-yard line, and he gets eight yards. Out 
Just a quick toss out there. and Let's just get some positive yards, get a block on the point of attack, which we do. Terrell's out there, gets a great block and gets some great positive yardage. Eric Marsh is in as a fullback, wing left. A blocking back here for Price, who's looking for his fifth rushing touchdown of the day. The Aggies are going to throw it, and it's caught by Whitford. The tight end, Tomas Whitford, his second receiving touchdown during his junior year. Yeah, Tomas just sneaks out of the out of line there. So you see him on the end right here, and he just comes out into the back of the end zone. Marsh is short, and they're thinking, look, we've seen Marsh come out here and make a catch before. And so they're on him, but they lost track of Tomas behind. And that's just a nice pass, too, and right over top, because you can't just drill it in there. You have to drop it in with a little touch. I think everybody in the stadium thought that the ball was going to go to Jawan Price. Instead, the Aggies go to the tight end, Whitford. Point after from Ethan Albertson. Not necessarily trickery, but a little bit of confusion maybe defensively for UMass. First catch of the day for Whitford. Aggie lead grows to 17. The new school record holder, Danny, in games played and starts, and the highlight of his career so far is the bowl game, but he could have some big-time highlights at the next level, we think. Yeah, oh, he's, it's, been a, it's been great to have him here. He's a certain asset for the program, without a doubt. Knox Statter, a team captain. 6'7", 344, that doesn't grow on trees, so that's really attractive for scouts, of course. And now his attention will turn to his upcoming pro day, and he is certainly hopeful that he will become the next draft pick in the history of this program. Still some time left, 7.04 left. Can the Aggie defense make another stop here? They still haven't forced a turnover today after forcing five the previous two games. Zero will keep it, and he can't get to the edge. That's Cyrus Dumas <laughs> screaming up from his cornerback position. You know, the nice thing about uh, Cyrus Dumas on that play is he actually broke down and, and made the quarterback decide which way to go. So a lot of times you see people just come flying in and sweep the legs. Other times you have to say, you know, quarterback, you decide. And I'm going to break down and make you. Garrett Zero will launch into double oh. coverage. The catch is made, but he was out of bounds. Heck of an effort there by that, Charleston Southern transfer Isaac Ross. That was a great catch and a great throw. It's out, but that's a great job right there. He just drops that thing right in between two defenders. Chris Ojo dropping there in coverage. Third and 11 for UMass and quarterback Garrett Zero. Nine for 16 today for 94 yards, and the pass is batted down by Donovan King. It was either King or Lama Levea right there. Both guys were right there on the Aggie D line, and it brings up fourth and 11 for UMass. And they're trying that screen out there, but no one was tricked at all. We have two guys right there. If that was Donovan King that did, doesn't get it, there were still three people out on the other side where the ball was supposed to go. That play was going to go nowhere. Potentially, both of those guys touched it. I think Levea might have deflected it initially, and then it was batted down by Donovan King. So this is the game right here for UMass. They're going to go for it on fourth and 11. Zero stepping up to throw. He's tripped up initially, and he pinballs his way for the first down. The Aggies almost had him tripped up. He stayed on his feet, and he runs for 12 yards in the first down. Holy smoke. Folks, we had him pinned, too. We had him in the pocket where we had pressure coming in right there. We almost get him there. Mm. He gets away. He's one-on-one -on -one with our best tackler, and he gets the first down. Zero has shown today that he is awfully mobile. Whistles a pass out of the reach of Josiah Johnson, his tight end. 
A big hit was made by Dylan Early, who is slow to get up at midfield. I think if Early doesn't go for the for the big pop, I think he picks that. I think it's coming, it's high and, and outside and right towards Dylan. Now that's a big guy coming across the middle. It's easy for me to say up here, but if he doesn't, oh, he really gets in there and gets a big, big hit. Second down and 10. Zero takes the snap, throws it near side for the tight end, Josiah Johnson. Those two guys have not been on the same page today, Danny, and finally able to connect right there for the reception, the first catch today for Johnson. Yeah, it's one of those quick get the ball out to him and go get some extra yards. He's a hard runner. We've seen him run, line up a quarterback today. He gets out there. Trevor has a chance to put the lick and hold on, but he just busts through there. He's a big guy to bring down. Clock is moving. Five and a quarter left here in the fourth. Third and short for UMass. They need the 47. And they'll try to get it with Merriweather. It'll depend on the spot, and it's a generous spot. It'll move the chains. Time is not on the side of UMass, though. It is only their 14th first down today, 29 for the Aggies. Zero, he'll launch as he's hit. He has a man, but he overthrew him. Melvin Hill had a step on the Aggies secondary. Zero was belted as he threw it. But a different player is down for UMass. It's not Zero. It's Merriweather. Must get caught up in the garbage. There are lots of blitzing, so we had a lot of guys blitzing on that play and ended up in a single high safety man coverage. And he got behind someone there. And if he could just, if it would have just had a better pass, but there was no time because of course we had everyone coming on that. Merriweather has had a huge day in the backfield for UMass. 161 yards on the ground, 21 carries, two touchdowns. So that's good to see that he's walking off with the help of the training staff and now will jog off on his own. I thought for sure that was Zero who was down, and Zero was pointing to the officials. Ruling on the field's incomplete pass. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Massachusetts head coach. It's 15 yard penalty. Wow. Second down. Unbelievable, Danny. I That's our interim it. head coach, yeah. Alex Miller. That'll push back UMass 15 yards, and the former UMass offensive lineman can't believe it. He's going to plead his case, but mm. I think it's too late. That is demoralizing for a UMass offense that is trying to get back into this. Trailing by 17, so it is second and 25 for Alex Miller and UMass. Zero under heavy backside pressure by Devin Bell. He scoots and he runs. Started his slide just past the 40 up to the 42. He gets nine yards on the run. He, he can really scoot. He has some wheels, right? Look how quick this is here. We're on him too, right? We have someone chasing, giving chase right there. But he's got wheels. He really turns it on. It's like, oh, I'm going to get down before Trevor puts one on me here. Third and 16 for UMass. Certainly four down territory for them here in the final four plus. Zero drops back to throw, clean pocket. Now he'll roll left and he will tuck it and run. And he has the first down and then some. Zero using his legs again to extend this drive for UMass. You know, it's interesting there because he broke the pocket. Well, we rush three guys and drop everyone. Not a big fan to begin with because what happens is you sit back there forever. He's got wheels, so now he has a chance to break the pocket and either run it or throw it. Chris Ojo is the other thing that slips by him. Zero will toss it near side, and it is almost intercepted. DJ McCullough right there again. He almost had a pick earlier in the half. And this pass is incomplete. Zero 
Zero was looking for Rico Arnold. Clock does stop. 3.46 left to go on the incomplete pass. Second down and 10 for UMass. They've been playing catch up all day. They find themselves down 17 here in the final four minutes of the season. They'll put Ross in motion. Zero looks his way. Throws it right, has him in. It's caught by his tight end. That is Jarrett Pallotta. They have eight tight ends on the roster. Pallotta is one of them. They use a host of tight ends, including him. They had two guys that were wide to the right at 6-5. This is one of those, now it's our turn to play two deep coverage zone and just gives them that little underneath in there. The motion out, Merriweather into the Wide receiver area it was a quarterback draw for Zero, and Trevor Brohard was not fooled. He is laying it all out on the field, Danny. Yeah, he's he's played hard from uh, start to finish in every game he's been in, and uh, he he brings it. And last week at Kentucky, he had a great game. Well, he's got to be spent. At the end of the game, yeah. he's got to be spent. Second down and 12 for UMass. Ball is at the 21. Time is not on their side with under three left here in the fourth. And off goes to Merriweather, trying to squeeze through a hole, and he's tackled from behind by Eric Marsh. Seven-yard gain, but the clock will continue to move. Just over two left in the fourth. Get into the part of the game where up front the defensive linemen it makes it hard, especially if you've had a couple of series where you've been a three-man rush, so they're almost double teaming you and you're still trying to fight through. Here they are about to score and you're trying to hold them out, and it's just everything you have. UMass has not used any timeouts so far here in the half. Catch is made by Pilata, his second catch during this drive. And the tackle is made by Chris Ojo. We are under two left here on the fourth, a gain of 14. Check down, a gain of four there on the catch for Pilata. Massachusetts. And UMass will use the timeout here. Timeout on the field. And we will step aside as well. Final 147 here in the regular season when you come back. Overall, Danny, it's been a pretty good effort today. It's been a great effort. Put some really points up the board, right? It's a lot of things are going right for the offense and the defense. A few breakdowns, but other than that, pretty good game. It's just, um, it's good to have one of these, especially finishing at the end of the season. 608 yards of offense for the Aggies today. The most since their game against Incarnate Word, November 2019. This is fourth and one for UMass. Zero the quarterback, pistol back Merriweather. Merriweather has run for 168 today. He hurdles the defense, and the mark is not a good one. This will be turnover on downs. The Aggie defense gets a huge stop here on the final 143. He tries to go over top, and I think there's an Aggie right there trying to, trying to not allow him to get any further yardage. Only on the field is a runner short of the line to gain. First down, New Mexico State. And I think you're right, Adam. I don't know about the mark or not. They're going to ask about it. Look, look, let's watch up front there. So he's going to go over top. He can't run the line, so he has to go over top. And look at all the Aggies that are right there. They're trying to shut that down. They're going to jump up and meet him in the gap. See the Caleb Mills in there. We see a lot, of, under further review. a lot of Aggie hats. They're going to check the spot again. I was curious at first, Danny at the naked eye, wondering why Merriweather jumped and hurtled, yeah. but he had to because he had nowhere to go. The road was blocked. The road was completely blocked. When you get a big offensive lineman that's on their side, there's nothing you can do. You can kind of see him right there. I think he actually pancake blocks an Aggie, but there's a nice pop. Who had him in the hole? Someone gave him a great stick right in the hole. I think that was Trevor that jumped up there. 
Perot Hart or Ojo, that's probably a safe bet. Yeah, that's right. That's my go-to. No matter what happens, like, oh, yeah, there's Trevor. Oh, is it Chris Ojo again. So the referee, Derek Anderson, and his crew will check the spot. It was fourth and one. So all UMass needed was one yard for Merriweather. And if the call in the field stands, the Aggies can run out the clock and finish this season with a W. Yeah, I think Gojo had him initially, and Caleb Mills finished him off in there. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, New Mexico State. All right, turnover on downs. The Aggies get the football back. And while we have a moment, we want to say a big thanks to our entire crew for the entire football season, led by Vinny Conway, our director, producer Rita Rodriguez. Engineer Alex Ramirez, talent stats, Anthony Casals. Could not do it without them. Adam Young, Danny Nee, and Tatiana Favela with you. 143 left. The Aggies trying to run out the clock and conclude the 2021 season with a win. Juwan Price, who has four rushing touchdowns today. It's four yards on the run, and I think Jonah Johnson maybe played his best game of the season here in the finale, Danny. I think he did. I think, you know, we've said all along, too, you give him time, it's, he's very good back in the pocket. He's ran the ball well. He's thrown the ball well. He's just controlled the game. He's had some passes. He's had to drill across the field, some touch passes. It's just been all around great performance by Jonah. And that offensive line did quite well. Pressure a little bit, but for the most part, they could run the ball, they could throw the ball. Uh, it's just a great showing all the way around. Good job managing the game today by Jonah Johnson. No interceptions, no turnovers. He throws two touchdown passes. Throws for 420 yards, 26 of 32, right back to Price. This was the heaviest workload day for Juwan Price in the backfield. He's up to 150 now, our 23 carries. And he has really shown today what he can do. A lot of different wide receivers involved today. Warner with seven catches, six for Wyatt for 126. How about the season he put together? Four catches for Garcia Castaneda for 67. Bodison, three catches for 84. Tomas Whitford with a touchdown catch on his lone reception. Juwan Price will get a first down, and the crock will run out. What a day, 44-27, the final score from Aggie Memorial Stadium. The Aggies snap a seven-game losing streak. UMass loses their 17th in a row in true road games. And most importantly, those seniors get a win on senior day. Yeah, and who said this wasn't going to be a hard-fought game? This was very hard-fought. Very good game today on this fall day in Las Cruces. What a great day for football. Hey, yo. Never heard the Aggie fight song so much in a long time, Adam.